before we do this. I'm here. The squat, disintended body of an elderly dwarf woman dangles from a thin, crooked bough that sags at the tug of her noose. The bloated purple flesh of her neck, worn away in patches like moth-eaten linen, bulges over the rope that suspends her, and her lifeless head lolls forward, riggedly from one side to the other when the breeze shifts. Ew. Perceive a faint glow around her that casts no light on it, on its surroundings, but there is a tepid warm to it, and you feel somehow that you could reach out and touch it. Not with your hands, but with some aspect of yourself that has no worldly dimension. Reach out. You take a deep breath, clearing your mind, focusing on your objective. As you exhale, you find yourself spreading out toward the hanging woman, perceiving all that lies beneath you and her with a new, unfamiliar awareness. Once you have expanded enough to reach her, there is a sudden jolt to your mind, a ringing electric surge of images and words and sounds. Involuntarily, you shut your eyes and you feel yourself being pulled down to some deeper consciousness and a space occupied only by you and the hanging woman, and when you open them again, she is staring at you with eyes clouded in a milky fog, her body still swaying in a wind you no longer feel from a tree that stands planted in a misty void. The woman gives a slow nod of her head, the reef creaking as she does so, and she smiles at you. Have you come here for me, dear? Or have you gotten lost? Ah, uh, it is both, I think. Yes? Um, I like her voice. It's very creepy. Uh, am I imagining this? No, I think not. A pity that. It would be simpler. A mercy, then. Do not have to wander anymore, no? Alas, we are here, you and I, wherever here may be. Um, how are you able to speak to me? Is that what we're doing? Perhaps it just seems that way. Perhaps it is the easiest way for your mind to make sense of it. I think it is a very good choice. Um, I need to understand something that's happened to me. She nods, a look of pity on her face, as though consoling a child. The world looks a little different than it used to, is that it? Feels like you're noticing things for the first time that have always been there? She nods. You have seen past the shroud. It only takes an instant. Your soul remembers, yes? Remembers how it sees when it leaves the body, like being reminded of a dream you had forgotten. You are a watcher now, and a watcher you will stay. Well, uh, what's a watcher? What indeed? Long hours have many animancers spent studying such things. Not I, though. Not I. I'll tell you what I know, though, since fair is fair. And here we are, visiting you and I, and it reminds me of better times. Souls pass on, some say through Audra stones, which are the blood veins of the world. They leave the world for a time and are reborn into it, sometimes more than they were before, but usually less and seldom the same. For all souls, there is a time where they do not live yet have not passed on, and those souls roam the world, same as you or I, either living or lost. But no one sees them because they have forgotten how. A watcher sees, though, knows what to look for, and sometimes they know a person just by looking at them, know where they've been in ages past when their bodies were other bodies. See memories, even their honor can That's kind of cool. A wonder to behold when all goes well. A wonder. Uh, what did you mean when all goes well? Oh, nothing to be afraid of, I'm sure. It's just much to take in for some. Sometimes there's trouble sleeping or other difficulties. She smiles at you reassuringly, fanning out a tuft of long whiskers that sprouts from one of her cheeks. An inspired- You should see old Meerwald. 
he could tell you much more than I. A watcher just like you helped many in his day. Took up in an old keep no one would claim. Not far, not far. Kanua, beyond the Black Meadow. He will welcome the company. Um, I think I survived the Beowick. Do you know why that would be? Did you now, dear? My, that would be something, wouldn't it? Could be luck, could certainly be. A storm can be a careless thing. Or maybe it got its hands around your soul, but couldn't pick it up. A soul can be heavy if it stayed in one piece through its time. Strong souls, we call them in the trade. Cold, I mean. Cold, then. Those days are all behind me, no? <laughs> you said souls break apart over time? Oh, yes. Entropy. Rima Gan's work. We know little of why or how. We lose pieces of ourselves when we die and pick up pieces of others when we are born again. But <sighs> less than what we lost. We try to stop it with the animantic sciences, but with little success. A very small few resist Rimargan's influence and stay together through some force of defiance. At least for a time, but they all succumb eventually, I think. She clicks her tongue. Uh, I want to know something about you. Me? <laughs> I'll bore you to tears, though. Um, who are you? And here I thought you'd come to visit me in particular. Caldara de Baranzi of the Valian Royal Academy of Animantic Sciences. Not the greatest of their number, but I came here all the same because this was where help was needed. What happened to you? She laughs, a raspy, choked cackle escaping between rows of buttery yellowed teeth causing her body to bob up and down with each spasm. Seeing your blank expression, she catches herself. <laughs> As though the answer were plain as a rope tied for strangling. Allow an old dwarf her last bit of cheer. <laughs> well, I came where I was needed, didn't I? Offered my services to Lord Radric for a pittance. A humble pittance. I was to examine the Lord's wife. See why the gods have seen fit to poison her womb. Studied her for months, looked high and low for impurities, tested her violence, the permeability of her essence. Do you know what I found? Tell me. Nothing at all. A healthy woman, head to toe, blessed with a beautiful soul. Such a sweet woman, too. Meek, uh, but warm-hearted. A few months' time, and the lord of the house demanded answers. For a time, I told him what he wanted to hear. Oh, yes, my lord. She is riddled with imbalances. <laughs> I must have time to cure her. As the birth drew near, he grew impatient, as lords do. And this is where I've ended up. What's an animancer? A student of the soul. Something so basic, yet so poorly understood. But so many breakthroughs have been made in my lifetime. Had been made. Had been. To hear the locals stir it, we're a gang of soul manglers that preys upon the weak-minded. And the worst of us are. But the best of us? The best? Inspirations. Miracle workers. My parents were soul twins. Miserable before they met. Empty inside. It was an animancer who helped one find the other. Turned their lives around. You wouldn't believe the stories. Amnesiacs helped to remember their lives. The suicidal brought back from the brink of oblivion. The elderly afforded extra moments to say their goodbyes. 
how soon we forget when we're afraid. It is true. It's a fascinating science. A fascinating time to be alive in a place like Deerwood that does not control the research, no? I love the Valian Republics for many things. But their Ishin caution will leave them behind, I fear. Of course. Uh, dear. Farewell. Goodbye, my dear. It was lovely visiting. Aldera closes her eyes and her head slumps forward over the noose, and your surroundings seem to bleed into your vision from some unknown place of waiting. It was granted Crucible of the Soul. I check. I can't. Aloth looks at you through narrowed eyes. Are you alright? You seem lost just now. I'm a watcher. His arch eyebrows recede into his hood. Well, that is interesting. He gives you a sly grin. And I expect this has something to do with the hooded figures in the ruins, huh? In any case, I appreciate your honesty. Since we're traveling together, it's probably wise for us to share these things. Do you know anything about watchers? Only that they're rare and they seem to have unique insights into certain soul conditions. He coughs, as you just demonstrated. Let's continue on. Okay. Oh, hey, I lost a level. Uh, wow, he knows a lot of lore. Holy shit. You need some other stuff. Um. Yeah. Ow. Grimoires can hold four spells of each spell level, which motivates wizards to keep multiple grimoires for different needs. <laughs> also has the option of learning spells and grimoires they find nearby. Okay. So I have to pick two. I like that one because that could really help him out since he's a caster. I like that one too. Yeah, let's do that. I like it. So I got Crucible of the Soul. Wow, I've done the most damage. And I've created the most enemies. Most crits, most hits, most damage taken. The fucking boss over here. Crucible of the Soul. The Watcher unravels the vital essence of his or her enemies, gaining endurance in the process. Drains. Oh, that's interesting. Smell a pipe at once earthy and sweet. Winds its way into your nostrils. Your eyes trace the smoke to its origin where you find a broad man with a straw-colored hair leaning against a mossy rock wall. His pipe held to his lips with one meaty hand. He looks you directly in the eye, but the look is not aggressive. He regards you with a peculiar, peculiar smirk. Smir smirk. I can't talk. Seventeen and a half. Well, could be eighteen depending on how you count the dwarf woman. Uh, I'm sorry? The dwarf woman. You were trying to figure out whether to count her as a full person. I, I think you ought to. What are you talking about? The people hanging from the tree. Eighteen of them. Well, last I counted, anyway. Is that what you people do for fun around here? Name's Adair. So do the people around here. Might as well be nineteen. Don't think I'd put you much higher than twenty-two. Twenty-three tops. You look like the sort that likes to get involved. 
Uh, what makes you think I was interested in the dwarf woman? He looks at you a moment, his brow arched, his smirk broadens. I was smoking over here, saw you staring at her. Twice I refilled my pipe. You never so much as blinked. Your mouth was so slack, I took you for a rad at first. <sighs> uh... Do you know what a watcher is? Careful, friend. Let's not use that word around here. There's any number of Radrick bootlickers within earshot. Ciphers, animancers, watchers. Same thing in the eyes of folks around here. Radrick especially. They come to these parts all the time with their cures, preying on the desperate. None of them are who they claim to be. Of course, seeing you with that funny look, I'd be halfway inclined to believe you were having some kind of communion with that dwarf. <laughs> Either case, maybe I'm not 19 after all. N no offense. Think you're going to be hanged? The town's had it in for me for a long time now. Only fella who ever stuck up for me, well, he's number 18 up there. My headman on the farm. Used to be my captain during the war. War? I'm trying to see if it has controller support. That's sad. I don't think it does. Saints War. Only one in my lifetime. Fella decides he's the living incarnation of Athos. Overthrows Red Retsiris. Marches on Deerwood. So he gave him a Deerwood and hello. What's a Deerwood and hello? Zoom up. He smiles at this, but it's a smile of one recounting a joke. For effect rather than enjoyment. Who is Athos? God of Rebirth and Redemption. Formally, formally, anyhow. Maybe they call him something different where you're from. Uh, why was your headman hanged? Got involved. Radric sent men down from here the other day. Said they had it on a good authority. Someone in town was working with Kulsk. Kulsk? Piloting Radric's overthrow. Said he, if he didn't come forward right then and there, they'd hang every last one of us. No one was coming forward, so Swithin, that's my headman, he steps up and says it's him. They took him out at, at his word. He sighs and shakes his head, his eyes fixed on the tree. Bound to happen sooner or later, if not for plotting against Raedric, then for, for, for protecting me. What does your town have against you? Pick the wrong god. That's what it comes down to. There used to be a lot of Vathus worshippers in Gilded Vale. That mess of rocks over there, there's a temple to him, to give you some idea. Then one day, somebody named Widewind shows up on Deerwood's doorstep. Says he's the living flesh of Aethys. Got an army with him. Suddenly, Aethys isn't so popular in these parts. My brother Woden and me, neither of us believed it. No way was that Aethys. He enlisted, and then I did too. But, uh, he didn't make it back. After the war, people took to punishing Aethys worshippers. Accusing them of treason. Got real ugly, especially after the legacy started. Folks needed someone to blame. I was safe because I fought, but then this rumor starts that my brother, that he was on the wrong side. And I wasn't so safe anymore. Until my headman stepped in and said they'd have to hang him to get to me. Seems that's no longer a concern. Of course, Townies don't do the hanging these days, but when Radric's men come, they got no problem doing the pointing. A lost glances at you and Loris's voice. You can see why I was eager to leave. Who's Kolsk? The one who got tired of the hangings. He's on the run now. Probably will be till they catch him. You're next to be hanged. What are you still doing here? He gives a half smile. Drinking, mostly. Point of fact, I'm on my way out. Just haven't figured where I'm going yet. Not a whole lot of places out there that don't think Wadewin's legacy started with Wadewin. 
Uh, we could travel together. Where are you headed? Some place called Cade Nua. There's an old watcher there who might be able to help me. I seem to remember hearing something about that years ago. He tamed that place. People would seek him out for all kinds of things. Troubles of the soul, questions for the departed. Of course, that was back when you didn't have to say watcher with a hush on your breath. A man such as that, there'd be things I'd want to ask him. I don't know why I never thought of it before. I'm not sure how I feel about setting out with a stranger. And a strange one at that. But truth be told, you might be the only one in town who wouldn't feel some relief seeing me swing from that tree. There's a fine reason if I ever had one. All right, then. Guess I'll do some sightseeing. As long as you're not the one picking the sights. Hey, cool. More friends. Absolutely. Let's see here. You have equipped here. You have a cape already. Give you that. <laughs> you just look really weird. Um, sorry, I just wanted my camera off. Don't want, I'm here. Kind of want to chill without a camera at the moment. Yeah, I'm starting to get tired, so I just don't want it to seem like I'm falling asleep on stream, because that's really not what it is. I really don't- wow, this is long. Holy crap. Yeah, I don't want to read through that. Here. Our party is starting to uh, get better. See a large crowd gathered in the middle of the courtyard. This man stands in the midst of them, a cloak pulled over his head. Holding it close around his neck, the crowd has congregated around a platform and they all watch. Transfixed as a man is led to the platform flanked by two city guardsmen. The man is sat shackled hand and foot but carries himself as a nobleman. Not dining... Di Dining, dining to even glance at the crowd, the cloaked man pulls his co cover closer around his face and turns to leave, hunching over to avoid being seen. A crier on the platform unrolls a parchment and begins to read, but the man pays no attention, intent on getting away from the courtyard. The crier's voice grows louder and more intense as he reads, and voice from the crowd start to punctuate his sentences. Fears and shouts grow fierce. Oh, 
grows more frequent frequent and with e each one the cloaked man flinches and his shoulders drop droop he breaks from the crowd coming to the edge of the courtyard as the crier reaches the end of his proclamation the crowd grows silent again save for the occasional shout the man turns back to look at the platform seeing his father kneeling before the block ex neck exposed the executioner moves into position lifting his axe to strike the man turns suddenly unable to watch there is a wet thunk and the crowd begins into cheers and applause he leans against the wall regaining his composure then straightens up with obvious resolve he strides off away from the crowd and his majesty Aww. see a pair of immaculately polished leather boots and an impeccable maintained goatee their owner a slightly hook-nosed man with a wicked grin and narrow eyes he bobs his feather hat as a nearby merchant as he amples by a small piece of parchment held tight in his fist ink staining his fin fair fingers he seems to know most of the merchants in the market stopping to engage some nodding at others and even bartering for minor goods with a select few always smiling laughing and in sh exchanging jibes he approaches a heavy set amoa sp smile plastered stiff across his face and jokes about the weather he is gone and the smile on his face far more genuine he tips his cap at her winking and trundles off with a new yes what is he a bard This man and woman appear to be in deep in conversation, working at closely two bulging sacks. Satchels, they move to embrace until the woman notices your approach and pauses, her smile faltering a little. Well met, friend. Can we help you? She looks to her companion, brows furrowing with confusion. Do you know this woman, Nanton? Oh, hey! Nanton shakes his head. I don't believe so. Is there something you wanted, stranger? Oh, <gasps> this is the asshole! This is this guy! That cloak! I've seen it before. You killed that man in the cave. Are you accusing him of something? Ingrid looks to Nanton, touching his arm. If this was about the accident, we're both grieving Pearlie's loss. But it was a wild animal's doing. Nanton shakes his head minutely. You see a tremble in his hands. What would make you suggest such a thing? I had a vision in the cave. I saw Pearlie's last moments as he lived them. I saw you cut him with the knife. That's that's not possible. Nanton stares at you. How could you possibly know? His hand falls to his sword belt. I left no sign. Nanton, wait. Ingrid raises a hand. I don't know what you saw in that cave, but this isn't what you think. Pearly, my husband, he was as much a beast as that bear. I <gasps> Dude, did she set this up to be with this guy? What? I tried to leave the first time I suffered his temper, but he wouldn't have it. She looked away, expression pained. Nanton, he... We met, and I knew I'd found someone special, someone kind, who cared for me. Please, all I want is to leave this place, to start somewhere else. We... He looks down at the satchels. We've got some coins saved up. You could have it if, you, if you'll only let us go. Kitty, what should we do? Well, it sucks that he killed the guy, but now apparently he was beating her. So he, I, I guess she asked him to, uh, take care of it which is like worse in a way 
But now, it is wrong. Sounds fair enough, hand it over. I say we just let them go. Fuck it, whatever. I don't know what to do. I don't want to, like, kill him. Fuck. I don't know. I don't know what to do. I'm about to just tell him to get the fuck out of my sight. I honestly don't know what to do. Give me the loot. True. That seems really stingy, though. It's really hard to get comfortable in this chair right now. Because my ankle's hurting. Let's see. I'd say let's just have them keep the money and use it to start a new life because apparently the guy was beating her and I mean that's not cool yeah eat the money then thank you truly I I'm glad you understand Lee, here take this at least I hope it brings you luck we have a long journey ahead of us minor ring of deflection ooh I wish you well on your own travel, stranger. We won't forget this. How sweet. Oh, we got a stronghold? What? Reflection. Um, let's give this to our paladin. How sweet. I'm here. Anything else in here? Did we get everything? Got everything. I don't know. Like, I don't like guys that, like, beat on girls. And it seemed like she just wanted to get away from him. I still don't think that she he should have killed him. I feel like that's just kind of severe. I'm here. But whatever. But I feel her pain. We know there's more grain in there, Trumbull. We won't settle for scraps while you grow fat on our crops. A muffled shouting emerges from inside the mill. The first of you drunkards comes through that door gets a shot between the eyes. God's hear me, Swangnar, I'll put you down like a dog. I want the money is all true. True money, money does make the world go round. <laughs> Come away for now, lads, but we'll be back. Trumbull. And we'll have fair prices, or by the flame, we'll have a reckoning. New task. Investigate the food. I'm here. I don't know why I gave that guy a country accent. But it's sticking now. Guess let's go talk to this guy. An elven man stands before you, his relatively stocky build suggesting a life of labor. His face is pale and drawn and his eyes wide. Behind him, a younger man and woman exchange worried glances. The miller raises a club as you enter. It shakes violently in his grip. Get back if you value your life. Hold on now, I'm not here to hurt anybody. The miller hesitates and lowers his club. Wait, I know you. You just came into town, right? Don't tell me Swan has already got his claws into you. God, that's all I need. Um, my name's Aurelia. I've only just arrived in the Gilded Vale. Trumbull shakes his hand. You picked a bad time to come visit in Gilded Vales. Oh, wow. I read that sentence totally wrong. Let's start over. You picked a bad time to come visiting. Gilded Vales had all its shine scraped off. Just a big dung heap now. And Swanar thinks he's king of it. We're all just 
They're all mad. They're all of them mad. Oh god. That is very country. <laughs> What's all that ruckus outside? Trimble shakes his head. Where to begin? Bueno has wiped them up into a frost, going on about a grain store. Claims I've hidden away most of it. All I do with the grain is sell it. I can't create it out of thin air, and I can't hand it out for free. I pay the farmers for the crops they bring in, and then I sell what comes out of the mill. Most of it goes to the Black Hound on the west side of town for ale, and Swainar and his lot make sure they sure don't mind that part. You take a look at the fields on the way into town. The crops blighted, and most of what I've gotten from the farmers. It's gone off, rotten through. I can't pay top prices for blighted wheat, and I've barely got enough good grain to go around. Learner is howling him after things he has no right to. Uh, maybe I ought to go have a talk with this guy. Miller all but sags with relief. I'd be grateful if you did. He won't listen to me anymore, but maybe you'll have a better luck. Tell him we're all having a hard time of it, and we'll all have to make some sacrifices. We'll be in a debt for it if you can convince him. I'm here. True? For any loot in here oh that's stealing i'd be glad but stealing is fun right pepe very fun but then i get loot and stuff and that's always fun black hammer smithery we haven't been there yet Moo moo cows. I feel like there's just a. I know there is. They said that there's a curse going on here. But I don't think it's the curse that they think it is. If that makes any sense. We found the smithery. This Amamawa man is of impressive build, towering above the countertop. His skin is a dusty blue of a deeper ocean, and his thick arms boast corded muscle. Small ears frame a square jaw face coated in its and smeared suit and arcing black tattoos alike. He offers you a broad smile as you approach. Welcome, you're the first new face I've seen in, qu in quite some time. What can I do for you? Is this your shop? That it is. Been here nearly on 20, 20 years now. Seen all manner of things over the years, good luck and bad. Tuatanu glances at the guard standing watch along the wall. But the black hammer smithery remains. What have you done here? Or what do you have here? You come to us at a strange time, I'm afraid. The stock's not what it used to be, but we're we find weapons and armor to offer yet. All forged right here at the black hammer. Uh, what happened? We just don't have the supplies. Been expecting the next delivery for near on weeks now. And haven't seen any sign of it. Have to expect they were hit by bandits. The road out east is crawling with them. All my workers ran off with the wagon themselves, maybe to make some coin. To a tanu snorts, as if that lot would dare. He's right about the bandits. The dire situation of villages like this and the exodus to the cities have created far too many opportunities for our unscrupulous sorts. To a tanu scratches his jaw, thinking, If you happen to be headed that way, maybe you could keep an eye out for a supply wagon. Or my shipment, at least. Okay, I did not mean to hit the space button. But I saw Black Meadow. As it is, most of our weapons go to his grace lord Raidrick. To a Tanu glances at the nearby guard. And that's as it should be, but it doesn't leave much for outsiders. We just don't have the iron. Um where was the wagon traveling from? We sent the wagon up to New 
to a moor with weapons and it swings round through log home and the like to purchase supplies shortest route back is through the black meadow and then north through the wilds tuatanu shakes his head had a trader come through with word they made it to log home but haven't heard a thing since um, i'll find your supplies tuatanu nods and you have my thanks you bring those supplies back and i'll have plenty more to offer you a discount to start Oh, and if you find my workers, tell them to hurry it up or they can take farming up instead. Hello. Oh shit. Oh. I wish I had money. And not be a broke bitch. Summon? Thing summon something? Get rid of this shit. I like getting rid of excess gear. Hey, okay, cool. You're only halfway to a thousand. I'm here. Oh, is this Kalisha's sister? Kitty! Can I take the kitty with me? A dear wooden woman is sitting standing in front of the fireplace humming a quiet tune to herself or perhaps to her unborn child for she is qu clearly quite pregnant she turns her head slightly as you enter hail traveler well finally i was starting to think a woman makes a start of noise when she turns around and sees you oh i'm sorry i was expecting someone else she gives you a cautious smile can i help you <laughs> nice cat oh thank you she's a sweetheart that's clear of mice too uh, who are you expecting? My sister Kalisha is traveling with one of the caravans. She sent a letter before she came. Said she was going to pay her way by working as a guard for the caravan master. She, al she always was a tough one. She pauses. I don't suppose you've seen her on the road. Or caravan, perhaps. It's Master Odem Odemas. Um, caravan was attacked and we escaped, but Kalisha was caught in a bewit. Offer covers her mouth with a hand, eyes wide with horror. 
For a few moments, she could manage nothing but a strangled, voiceless gasping, her eyes brimming with tears. I knew. I told her it was a dangerous path to take. Felicia was always so certain she could take on any danger. Offra sniffles. Oh, my poor sister. I'm sorry, stranger. I just... I just can't believe she's dead. Only the dog can come. <laughs> if only I hadn't called her here, and if I hadn't written to her, she might still be alive somewhere. Afra's face crumples and a solitary tear slides down her cheek. Why did you send for Kalisha? I'm worried about the baby, about the legacy. I told Kalisha as much as I could, but all I know is that for a long time now, every child born in Gilded Vale has been soulless, empty. It's happened to so many mothers, and Lord Raedric, he's exiled all of them, calling it a, it a sign of the god's disfavor, she sniffs. My hot horse gone, I don't know how I'd manage if I lost my home too. I hoped Kalisha could help me. They say Ranga, the old midwife, knows a way to prevent a child being hollowborn. But she moved south to Onslug's compass two seasons ago. The journey is too far for me. I, can, I can't make it as I am. But I don't have anyone else now with Kalisha gone. More tears run down her face. Please, could you help me? Uh, I'll find Ranga for you. Oh, you will? Oh, God bless you. Here, I'll give you a coin to pay her with. Trouble yourself with that. I think it's a fashions out of... Well, I'm not so sure, but it shouldn't be too much of a burden. Copper. Angsal's compass is what we call the lagoon to the south. You'll have to cross the wilds to get there. That's what keeps it myself. She claps her hand there. Really, you'll be saving us. Puts a hand on her stomach, smiling. I'm here. I'm here. Does this mean I can take your stuff? Certainly. I'm here. Um, I think we can go check out the temple. 